Hey everybody, this is Ben. In front of me is a mini bike I converted to electric a couple summers ago, but it's pretty basic. It's definitely time for an upgrade. And yes, that will include a big electric motor and some lithium batteries. So first thing I wanna show you is just uh, what I already did to this. And then after that, I'll show you what the planned upgrade is. Uh, so to start with, this is pretty basic. What I did was I basically um, had some parts on hand already from a, a salvage small electric kick scooter. And I basically just reused those parts in the electric mini bike. So right down here, we have a 24 volt uh, DC motor. Uh, it's just a simple brushed DC motor, 250 watts. Uh, it is a model XYD-6A2, and it's rated at 15 amps. It's a, a Curie Technologies motor. Um, connected to it is a number 35 chain uh, straight to the back wheel. Now, one thing is I never really got to play with things like mini bikes when I was a kid, so I don't have any background in this. I actually had to look up some information on things like uh, what are the common chain sizes and uh, things along those lines for mini bikes. Uh, so number 35 chain was very, very common. Uh, also on the back here is a 60 tooth uh, sprocket, also very common. But how these things were typically run was with a very small gasoline engine and typically a centrifugal clutch. Oftentimes that's where the brake also was. So in this case, uh, one of the other things that definitely needs to be upgraded here is add some brakes. There's literally no brakes on this thing yet. Uh, otherwise, it's just two uh, 12 amp hour sealed lead acid batteries. Again, very basic, nothing complicated here at all. And pretty much everything was ratchet strapped and zip tied down with the exception of the motor with a couple of screws uh, going and holding it in place. Now this motor does use a foot mount. So literally it has a, a flat horizontal piece at the bottom to bolt it straight down into the frame. So if I flip the switch to on and twist the throttle, we'll see the back wheel spin. So again, very simple, very low power. Uh, this 250 watt motor is, it's enough to push an adult around, but not very fast and it definitely struggles up hills. Um, so one of the big things I'm gonna have to do is add brakes to this, but I also want a much more powerful motor and some more powerful batteries. So what I'd really like to do with this mini bike is stick in this Briggs and Stratton E-Tech electric motor. Uh, as you can see, it's quite a bit bigger than the electric motor that's already in here. Uh, this will run anywhere 24 to 48 volts. It's got a 7 8 inch drive shaft on it. It's a nice big permanent magnet DC motor. Uh, typically it would be rated at about 8 horsepower uh, continuous 20 horsepower peak. Now if I'm running it at 24 volts, uh, it's probably going to be a little bit less than 5 horsepower and peak at a little less than 13 horsepower. Now, considering that a mini bike with a gas engine, but like a 6 horsepower gas engine, would be considered pretty big. Uh, and you have to rev the engine to really get that power, whereas with electric, you get it instantly. Uh, this should be a, a pretty nice layout. Uh, the trick here is that this motor did use a face mount. Uh, you bolt it face-wise to hold it in place. And all I have to mount to here is really this bottom area where I need a foot mount. So I'll have to design some sort of a, probably a steel plate uh, going vertical and then welded to some sort of a horizontal piece, which I can bolt down over here, uh, probably with some slots so that I can slide it to adjust the tension on the chain. Now, this is already taking up some of the room and I still need space for batteries. Now, what I'd like to do for batteries is I do still have some Nissan Leaf cells left from some other projects. And the great thing about Nissan Leaf cells is their size. They're about nine inches wide, which is really just about perfect for an electric motorcycle. Um, it fits right between your knees. Uh, so if I have a stack of four, maybe five of these, I think I can squeeze these all in and fit. Uh, some of this is probably going to depend on the exact location of the motor. So I'm probably going to be doing some uh, cardboard aided design, just doing some cardboard mock-ups to make sure I get everything laid out the way I want it to be. And then of course, when I'm all done, I also want to add uh, an LED headlight and a seat. I actually was riding around on uh, 24 volts with this little motor with no seat. Not very comfortable, but uh, still pretty fun. And basically, I want this cycle for um, events, going around at campgrounds, things like that. Um, one thing that I did find a little strange 
was that um, for the smaller chain, this number 35 chain, uh, it was difficult to find a sprocket that fit number 35 chain and also a 7 eighths inch drive shaft. That was sort of an unusual combination. I did find one on eBay and I've ordered that. Uh, and then the other thing, I was trying to figure out how to do an appropriate braking system on here uh, without that centrifugal clutch. There's really no spot for braking up there. Um, now on this frame, originally, there was actually a caliper that mounted right about there, and it used the, the drive sprocket as the, the disc for a, a brake disc. So the, it was kind of a weird thing. Um, the chain would spin the sprocket and drive the vehicle, but then a caliper would actually pinch directly on the sprocket as the brakes. Um, I did look into the possibility of mounting a caliper right here, just really odd angles and everything. And it, you know, typically your chain has some grease on it and you don't want grease on something you're braking on. It sounds a little complicated. So I did manage to locate a band brake. So what I can do is actually mount kind of a, a narrow drum uh, back here. And a band brake is almost like a drum brake, but inside out. Uh, it uses sort of a drum, but then the braking happens on the outside of it instead of the inside of it. I've never used these before. I don't know how uh, effective braking that is. It seems to me like it's probably not going to be fantastic braking. But at the same time, up here on the front wheel, um, I've also got that same bolt pattern going through the rim. So that's another possibility is I may be able to add front brakes to this. I mean, these were never designed for front brakes. Obviously on any vehicle, the front is really what does most of the braking. But since the back and the front uh, rims are the same, uh, if I can bolt some sort of a brake to the back, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to bolt something to the front. So if the band brake doesn't work out well, um, I'll try a little braking on the front here. So I did the mail order thing and I ordered that band brake and I ordered the sprocket for the electric motor. Uh, so my next steps are going to be uh, taking apart what I had in here originally, this little 250 watt motor and the uh, uh, related components. I'll get those out of there. Um, I'll get to work with that new sprocket and the brakes. And then after that, I'll probably start working on the mounting plate for the E-Tech motor. Uh, once I've got all that worked out, I'll be working on the batteries. And after that, I'm gonna have a pretty cool electric mini bike. Uh, I know I always like working on this kind of stuff and I, I hope you enjoy it too. Uh, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. And in one of my next ones, you'll see me working on this. Stay charged up. See you next time.